Okay, okay, okay. Now here's the second one, so we're going to go over that real quickly. This is just for reference. So you can look at um, the PowerPoint slides, but this is just the audio to it, okay? So the voice of the human being behind every story. I'm really happy to say that, as you probably already know, I'm the president of the African International Documentary um, Festival Foundation, and that's where I met your teacher, Dorka. Um, and it was really wonderful. She's really, really talented. I'm so glad that she's able to have this um, class for you. So what's important, and the reason why I started the foundation, the film festival competitions, was that I felt that there was there needed to be platforms where stories and voices could be heard. Okay, so we talked about your voice as a storyteller. Now we need to talk about the importance of the story, the people who are actually, what you are actually doing. I'm going to talk about some of the aspects that will help your storytelling when it comes to the human being uh, behind the story, because that's paramount. You are not the story, unless you're doing a documentary on yourself, which is an ethnography or an auto-ethnography. But at this point in time, we're going to look at the, the individual being the story. Just a couple of things for you to remember. When you're shooting something, whether with your phone or your camera, don't talk when you're shooting, okay? Because you'll mess up the natural sound. Okay, that also means that you want to hold your shots when you're doing video, hold your shots for, for about 15 seconds so that you, just like when you're delivering your audio of your voice, you want to have pacing when it comes to your editing. Let things breathe, okay? Let things breathe. Use your tripod at all times. If not a tripod officially, put it on something that's level or something that's sturdy and you don't want shaky shots. And really the rule of thumb is not to use any zooms or pans unless you absolutely have to. When it comes to interviewing, same concept. You're going to see consistency. When you're talking with someone, you're interviewing them. Let them know that as the interviewing is going on and you're recording, you're going to nod your head that you've heard them. But you're not going to speak after they speak very quickly because you'll mess up the natural sound. So when I was able to interview the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s wife, I was so excited and what she was saying was so interesting that she would say certain things and I would say, yeah, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh, wow, yeah. And that's terrible to edit, to getting all of that, yeah, 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 <laughs> out of that. But also, um, it messed up the soundbite of what she was saying. So I learned Shh, just to be quiet. Let them speak. Nod your head. And then when there's a moment, a pause, then you ask your next question. Okay? Let them know that, that you don't want to give them the idea that you're not listening. Follow-up questions. If you have follow-up questions, same thing. Are you saying yes or no? And they answer, follow-up. And that means what? Answer, follow up. And so you're saying, okay, so there's a way you can do that and not mess up your editing. Questions are really great. They give facts and details and emotions and the unexpected. But short questions are really, really good. Like, did you do it or didn't you? Yes or no? Very powerful. Are you going to win or lose? Yes or no? Um, strategic setting, okay? When you're interviewing someone, make sure the backdrop what's behind them is appropriate. If you're talking to someone about going a garden, have something about a garden in the back. Okay, have a beautiful garden in the back. Not a wall necessarily. And before you even go out and who you're going to decide on who you're going to um, who you're going to interview, think about these aspects. Um, who are the audiences for the story? What information do they need to have? what is missing, and who is missing. You are the storyteller. If you don't know what a word or phrase means, don't use it. It's not the volume of your information that is important. It's the clarity and the quality of your information that's important. Now, remember, there's a lot of power. The code of, con code of ethics that we have here um, dictates professional behavior. You want to seek the truth and report it to the best of your ability. You want to act independently. This is your story. This is your documentary. You don't owe anybody anything. 
Minimize harm to yourself and others if you can, which means you tell the information that needs to be told for the story. Everything else, not necessarily. Okay? Think about it. And be accountable and responsible for everything that you've done. Then finally, um, the last bit here. Um, I had to use this with Aunt Pearly Sue. Aunt Pearly Sue is the international um, storyteller that talks about the Gullah Geechee. Uh, that ties in West Africans to um, to America, especially on the South South Carolina. As you can see, she's in her outfit. She's tell, talking in her own dialect, as, as well as Jerry Taylor. She does a sweet grass baskets here that you may see. Um, that is connected to West Africa and here the Gullah Geechee and if actually if you allow them to just talk then you're good so it's about their voice and your voice to meet the voice of the human being behind every story if you're interested in knowing a little bit more and seeing the taste of Gullah just go to my website here JaniceMCollinsPhD.com you can even see when I went to Nigeria and Sierra Leone and Guyana, um, and uh, Ghana, and all of that. So you can read more about that. Good luck with your exercises. I hope this helps. I'm over time, so I gotta go. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.